Hello fellow travelers of the world wide web and welcome back to your favorite program on the internet. The I'm gonna find an obscure video game and present it to ya program. No, but in all seriousness, today that's exactly what I'll be doing. Showing everybody on the channel one of the most obscure Konami games released for the PlayStation Portable. Yeah, you should buckle up and get some popcorn because this video will get weird. The PSP was a handheld device released in 2005. It was basically Sony's response to Nintendo's, at the time, monopoly on the handheld gaming market. It was a far more powerful console than the competitor, the DS, and promised home console gaming experiences on the go, which it mostly delivered. Above all that, it could natively run PS1 games. Wait, 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 wait. Before we move on with the video, I feel obliged to this mostly because I am not a big creator and I don't have a huge audience. But like, over 90% of my viewers are not subscribed to this channel. So if you're watching this video or any video on this channel in particular and you like it, make sure to subscribe. Thanks. Now on with it. Now that we've got the history lesson out of the way, we can focus on the central point of the video. One of the weirdest early releases for the PSP, a first-person shooter roguelike called Coded Arms. I first heard of this game through one weird Reddit post I found about obscure PSP games. For some reason I cannot for the life of me find the post in my history, but I think it was dated sometime around 2010. Either way, curiosity forced me to grab my PSP from my shelf, get the game on my device and actually give it a play. While most roguelike games have you dropped in directly into the roguelike part of the game, Coded Arms does this really weird thing where you are forced to play a number of levels so the game gets to give you every armor, weapon and has you meet every enemy and boss before doing an whoopsie, the lore caught up to us. Time to make the protagonist stuck in a simulation forever. The lore of the game is probably one of the worst I've seen. Like it's generic, bland, it's like hacker guy hacks into government military simulator called IDA to get some kind of data to sell online. The only way to survive and reap the greatest rewards is to reach the kernel database, destroying the enemies and bosses at the end of each sector. And you know like the, the game like at the start in the intro cutscene actually tells you that hacking too deeply into unknown non-civilian protocols with what seems to be like homebrew hacking or whatever they're hacking, carries the risk of uh, contracting a medical condition called Achiba syndrome and warns them that upon infecting that they will not be able to return. This basically means that once you get infected you'll be stuck forever in the military simulation and that's exactly what happens. That's the point of the story after beating the final boss where the game goes like, oopsie here you go sir take your roguelike either way. When talking about gameplay, we must mention first and foremost that this is a first person shooter on the PSP and if you don't see the problem in running a first person shooter which is mostly movement based on a one joystick is I don't know what to say to you. Honestly, it's not that big of a deal since the game provides you with a control option where you can assign a camera movement to the joystick. But that's besides the point. How does it play? Well, it's a standard first person shooter with a lot of very basic weapons and a really floaty jump. The game by default works with a very handy lock-on feature that unfortunately is a bit gimmicky, as the game has really high recoil on almost every weapon when moving left and right and only some of the weapons are good while moving. You see that circle on the screen? That's the auto-aim feature, but it really isn't as easy as the game automatically aiming for you, as you have to account for recoil, in this case you do way better if you tap straight instead of just spamming the R button. There's also a scoped mode on D-pad up that you can use on every weapon in the game, which is just a very awesome feature, not only for sniping but also for lining up headshots. I know I said the weapons are fairly generic in the game, but I can't state how good some of them feel. In particular, the shotgun and the AR are great weapons. There's also a pistol type for every type of enemy, one which is a jack of all trades, one that fires poles that kills bugs faster and one that fires poles that kills robots faster. There's an equivalent for a rocket launcher as well and for grenades. I also like this bang ass lightning gun. 
While I can't criticize the combat all day, I have to mention that it all feels very arcadey in a really good way. Enemies come in swarms, die quite fast, and all of them have some kind of unique moveset and weaknesses, so it's a bit more complex than what I've explained so far. And I mean it in a good way, since there's also an element of randomness, like which weapons and upgrades you do get. Yeah, you do get weapon upgrades after using a weapon for a certain amount of time, and there are power-ups that either reveal the entire map for a limited amount of time, give you infinite ammo, or make you invisible. So there is plenty to love, but also plenty to hate in coded arms combat, and while I did find it quite fun and engaging, I have no idea how fun it would be in a playstation longer than an hour and a half. I for one think it switches up things enough to be interesting and the boss fights are really fun and look awesome. Before we can speak about any other fact though, we must focus a bit on... In terms of graphics, this is one of the most impressive looking FPS games on the PSP. I love the aesthetic of most levels. The cityscape has this cyberpunkish Blade Runner feel to it, with all the neon signs and the garbage bin and the occasional Japanese voices reading the news you can hear. The base is a more industrialized version of the city and the ruins have this underground forgotten feel to them. Each area feels unique in its own way and not only that but they do have quite high visual fidelity for the PSP. That does come with a sacrifice though. The game always runs at 20 FPS. I didn't know that until I looked it up and even then I played it on the original hardware and it feels more like locked 30 than locked 20. Keep in mind that in relation to performance it can drop to 18 to 19 FPS in more intense situations or when using any of the one gazillion weapons this game has which use intense particle effects. In terms of general presentation I quite like how the pickups are floaty colored things, how when you're poisoned Purple colored blobs appear all over your screen and how when you enter an unexplored room it basically generates in front of you with this animation that goes like... <sighs> also the minimap as well as the actual map are straight up vector displays which is again a really nice touch. All of these elements come into play to really give the impression you are inside a computer program, well as much as they can. If I were to talk about one last thing, I'd talk about the enemy designs and I'd honestly say that most of the enemies in, in this game look like something pulled straight from the original Half-Life. Like the soldiers mostly remind me of the soldiers in that game and this goofy bug enemy reminds me of the enemies in Zen. I think the game is quite heavily influenced by Half-Life since even the lightning gun I mentioned earlier is the same as the lightning gun in Half-Life and a lot of the weapons feel like Half-Life weapons. I think that's something positive though, it feels like plagiarism but like good plagiarism. And I don't think the weapons and enemy models have their own artistic merits as well as the gameplay parts I've mentioned. It's just that it feels like we've seen these things somewhere before. This game does quite an interesting thing in relation to music. When there is no action on screen or you aren't fighting any enemies, you are greeted with silence and occasional ambient. When a fight does initiate, the soundtrack kicks in and oh, it fucking slaps. And while I would like to show the soundtrack in its entirety, I do recommend you go give it a listen on YouTube if you're into techno stuff, since it is quite good. You can find all of the tracks in a playlist made by Rock Past or if you just search Coded Arms OST on YouTube. And honestly, I think that's it for the smaller music section this time, as I wouldn't really like to delve too deeply into this stuff, except mention the fact that each track feels unique and the soundtrack is quite short, sitting at 13 tracks. The game got a sequel in 2007 called Coded Arms Contagion that removed entirely the roguelike element of the first game and made the levels linear instead of them being randomly generated. This time you only got 13 levels and another one for training and that's it. The only new mechanic I've noticed is the ability to hack doors, turrets and computers. Apart from that it's exactly the same as the first game just without the roguelike part, which is kinda sad as you end up with way less content. Although, because the maps are not randomly generated, they do have more detail this time around. 
Interesting enough, Coded Arms was about to get a PS3 game called Call of the Arms Assault. The game was shown at E3 2006 and it was revealed the game would have 16 players multiplayer matches and once again the environments would be randomly generated as they would bring back the roguelike element for the single player. Unfortunately, with no news whatsoever, at some point in 2008, Konami announced the cancellation of the game and that was it for the series since then. As for the legacy of it, Wikipedia says the game has gained a cult following which can be noticed just by searching the game online and seeing how people reminisce about how they used to play this game a long time ago and how it's the best first person shooter on the PSP. As for usual, we do get our dose of closing remarks. At least in my opinion, this game feels like a solid 7 out of 10, and if you do have a PSP or do get the option to play it, I do quite frankly recommend it. Apart from that, the video quality this time around was probably boosted, but my microphone is still probably one of the worst malfunctioning pieces of tech I've ever seen, as it sometimes muffles itself, and even if I record lines over and over again, I sometimes don't notice the audio difference until I'm editing, and then at this point I'm too lazy to change it. As per usual, if you like the video, share it around. I've been Luca, and I hope to see you next video. Peace.